Christmas and good day to you and to yours. Um, we're so glad that you could join us this day for our Christmas service. It won't be a long one because we want to allow you, everybody to get back to their festivities, the, the opening and the unraveling of gifts and any Christmas tradition you may have for today. But we did want to remember the reason for the season. And that's to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And this year we get to do it all together virtually online. Something that we were accustomed to uh, during the pandemic a couple years ago. Um, but now we get to do it again. Um, uh, do it on a, an actual joyous occasion of, of Christmas um, a day. And uh, we get to do that at home in the covered of our own home for a short, short service. So I want to welcome you and, and, and all your friends and family to our service here uh, at TPA. Uh, I just want to share one announcement uh, before we get into worship. Uh, and that announcement is, is that next week we will be returning to in-person for our New Year's Day uh, service. Uh, we will, it'll be a uh, prayer-focused service. Uh, so we do encourage you to join us uh, in person. Our service time starts at 10.30. But don't feel that you have to just get there at 10.30. Uh, there's lots of time to fellowship before service and also to join us for pre-service prayer. So we hope to see you then. Otherwise, we hope you have a great week. Um, and what I'd like to turn your attention to right now is we're going to get to worship in a second. Um, and one of the reasons why that we worship it's because we've been given great news, good news that should bring each of us joy. Uh, in Luke chapter 2, uh, we hear of uh, a point in time when angels visit shepherds. Uh, now, shepherds of that time were people that were considered lowly. Yet, it's interesting that it's mentioned that they were the ones that the angels visited. And what's really fascinating is that you get to see the interaction in Luke chapter 10. Naturally, the shepherds were overwhelmed by the radiance of the angel when they were visited by the angel. And this is what the angel said in verse 10 of chapter 2 in the book of Luke. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. What's awesome is that this has happened. And at the time, that's what the angel was telling the, 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 the shepherds, that this has happened. The Messiah, the Lord, our Savior, that is who we are worshiping this morning. And so join us this morning as we get into worship. Uh, let us prepare our hearts uh, with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we are so grateful to be celebrating this uh, joy, joyous occasion of Christmas, which reminds us that you fulfill the promise of sending your Son here on earth. Uh, we are so grateful for his entire life, death, and resurrection for us. Um, we are celebrating this, this exciting, uh, this, this moment that was filled with hope, joy, love, and which brought peace, um, and is still doing all those things to this day. Let us prepare our hearts and ready ourselves to worship our Lord and our Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us worship together.
as we transition into the next part of our service, God, that you would just be with us in our homes, wherever we happen to be streaming this service today, God, that you would show up and speak to us. God, that you would speak to hearts waiting to hear from you this morning, God. God, we pray that your hand would be over this service and that everything we do would glorify you. In your name we pray, amen. Well, hello and uh, a Merry Christmas to you and yours. Uh, my name is Pastor Fred. Um, I'm the youth pastor and associate pastor here at TPA, if we've never met. Um, I'm so thrilled to be joining with you uh, this Christmas day um, to, to, to share a message on what makes this celebration so special. Uh, we've been wanting to do short sermons on uh, some of the Advent themes, and I'll be tackling the theme of, of hope today and how prevalent it is in our lives. Um, you see, we've all experienced hope, and especially during this Christmas season. Um, hope to see a loved one, uh, hope to receive a gift we've always wanted, or hoping or anxiously waiting to give a gift to someone that's wanted a gift. Hope is a powerful and strong emotion that can affect our faith towards the anticipated event. Um, if you think about where you are today, um, for, for considering the profession that you are doing, you hoped to become a nurse or a mechanic, uh, a police officer, um, and then you had the faith to do it, right? You worked towards uh, achieving that goal. Um, I'm sure there was hills and, and, and valleys and uh, challenges along the way, uh, which made the hope that much you know, stronger and your faith you had to, to, to develop it a lot more. But both go hand in hand, hope and faith. And if we lack faith while we hope for something, um, it can affect us. Um, and I would like to segue into um, a story in the Bible. Um, and that story is the story of Zachariah, a relative of Mary, the mother of Jesus, through marriage. Um, see, Zachariah was a priest, um, and it would have been his duty to be a bridge between God and, his, and God's people. It also would have been important that he himself had faith um, in what God could do, considering that he was the priest for God's nation. Um, but instead, in his story, we see that um, he needed to learn how to hope in what God could do, just as we all have to hope, to, uh, to learn to hope in what God could do for us. In Luke chapter 1, it mentions that both Zechariah and Elizabeth, his wife, were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees uh, blamelessly. So these were really good people. Yet, while he was on shift at the temple, it says he was visited by the angel Gabriel, and, and that he did not have faith in what God could do when God's messenger told him that his wife would be pregnant. And so the angel responded with a consequence for Zechariah, saying, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. And that's exactly what happened to Zechariah. When he came out of the temple, he could not speak. And yet the people around him knew that something tremendous had happened because of the way that he was behaving. And when we fast forward um, into when uh, uh, the moment after Elizabeth actually has her 
the, her baby. Uh, those around them figured that tradition should decide what this baby's name should be. They wanted to name the baby after the father, so they wanted a Zachariah Jr. or Zachariah the second type deal. Uh, but instead, Elizabeth spoke out against it because of what the angel had told her. And she said, no, he is to be called John. And when Zachariah was asked, Zachariah, he asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. And it was at that moment uh, that Zachariah's mouth was immediately freed from not being able to speak. And shortly after, it says that he was praising God for what had happened. You see, Zachariah was a priest for God's people, and we'd have been aware of the miraculous things God had done. Yet when it came down to it, he didn't have faith. Every year, billions of people celebrate Christmas, which I believe is meant to celebrate the greatest gift humanity has ever been given. Because of the birth of Jesus, we have been reconnected to God without needing to have a priest or animal sacrifices to atone for our sins. That has all been covered out of the love of God for us. Christmas is the, 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 the start, the, 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 the genesis of that story uh, of God coming on, on earth through his son, Jesus Christ. The question though is, what consequence or blessings are you missing out on because you have chosen to not have faith? Maybe you're returning to church because it's the holiday season, and in fact, that's when most people do. But what happens to the other 51 weeks of the year, or 50 if we count Easter um, as a heavily attended service? Are we missing out on all that God could be doing in our lives or the lives of the people we care for because we haven't really had faith in what God has done and is doing? You see, what God did 2,000 years ago by sending Jesus, his son, was a fulfillment of what he had promised. Just like when my parents promised me that they would get me a Nintendo 64 for Christmas, I was both very excited and skeptical at the same time. I was excited because it was something that it was the greatest gift that I had ever received or was going to receive. And I was skeptical for that same reason. And we could apply that to Jesus' birth because it was outlandish that a virgin would be pregnant. Right? It was outlandish that God would come to earth. Right? All of those things were outlandish. Yet, they caused a lot of excitement. And matter of fact, 2,000 years later, it still does. But one thing I needed to realize, though, as I waited my Nintendo 64, was the fact that all I could do, what I had the power to do, was either to believe what I was told and be excited for it, or I could doubt. And I chose to believe and I was rewarded for it. The celebration of Christmas will continue to be celebrated every year until we reach another promise that was given to us, which is that Jesus would return here on earth for us. So my question for you is, are you hoping in faith in what God has promised for us? And also, what Christmas reminds us of. You see, Christmas reminds us that God told us he was going to send his son, and then sent his son. And the, uh, the another film fulfillment is that God is going to send his son once again um, uh, for the second coming. That's what Christmas should also remind us of. You see, if God was able to allow a woman in her old age, and also a virgin, to be pregnant, how much more will he be able to fulfill the promise of a world where the Son of God ends up restoring peace and being king and ruler over all the earth? This Christmas, where lies your hope? Um, I want to encourage you if um, this Christmas message at all uh, uh, has spurred you to, to, to want to, 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 to ask questions and, and to seek God more, uh, please feel free to reach out and, and, and let us know. Um, uh, our phone number is 204-677-3435 and we'd be more than uh, happy to help you take that next step 
towards um, uh, walking in, 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 in faith and wanting to grow deeper in your faith. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we hope you have a, a, a merry Christmas, uh, an awesome Christmas day with your family and friends. Take care. I remember it was December 18th, about five years ago at three in the morning when my boyfriend and I broke up. I was devastated. My parents had just moved away to Thunder Bay. I was in Peterborough and I didn't have any Christmas plans all of a sudden. And it felt like a whole bunch of things were out of my control all of a sudden. Uh, my nephew Caius was born that day. It was a Sunday and it was the Advent Sunday of joy. And Caius mean, is Welsh for joy. His name literally means joy. I remember holding him for the first time, this perfect little baby who happened to look just like me when I was a baby. And, and even though I was crying in the waiting room out of sadness, I was suddenly crying out of just indescribable joy. He was so innocent and so perfect. And when I looked at his face, I could see the potential of his whole life just unfolding before me. And I couldn't be sad when I held him. I would sit him on my lap, and there's so many pictures of this time period where I would just sit him on my lap and I would look at him and, and it was like every time I held him, I could feel nothing else but joy. Just being around him brought me peace and joy and it grounded me in a time when I was definitely feeling a little bit out of control. On a micro level, I vividly understand what it means when they said Jesus came to be the joy of the world. Because on some level, I felt like Caius had come to bring joy to my world. And that's why they call babies bundles of joy, right? They bring joy to the people around them. Try being mad when you're looking at a cute baby. I dare you when they're not crying or anything like that. Try it. Try it. Luke 2, 10 to 15 said, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For on this day in the city of David, there has been born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts and praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and earth on peace to whom he is well pleased. When the angels had gone away, in, um, away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what wonderful thing has happened, which the Lord has told us about. You see, Caius, he brought me joy, and he brought my family joy. But on a much larger scale, when Jesus came, he came to be great joy for all people. <laughs> Even the shepherds in this passage, they're so excited, they run to Bethlehem. And I'm sure that Jesus brought Mary and Joseph joy. And then later, the wise men and Anna and Simeon in the temple, everyone he interacted with, I'm sure that he brought joy. But he wasn't just for them, to bring joy to them. He was for all people, to bring joy to all people. The joy that he brings to us today is freedom from sin. We aren't under the sacrificial system anymore. We aren't bound by the old laws that no one could follow anyway. Romans 6 says, for the wages of sin is death, which means that when we think, say, or do bad things, we deserve to die. But not anymore. Because we are free, all because this little baby came to earth. You know, we have joy because God sent his son to earth. God sent his one and only son for us, that we could have relationship with him. A little baby bringing joy and freedom to everyone he encountered. And we still can encounter him today and receive that joy and that freedom. There are so many ways that I experience joy from Jesus. I also find it so ironic that as a person who struggles with like debilitating um, seasons of depression, that the way that I feel most connected and most filled with the Holy Spirit is through uncontrollable laughter. 
laughter, I just cannot stop. It's honestly like Jesus is reaching down and reminding me that in any season of my life, he sees me and he's reminding me of the joy that I have in him. Now, I'm absolutely not saying that because we follow Jesus, you will never be sad. You will never be depressed or hurt in any way. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when we feel those things, we feel those ways, we can cling to him because he came to earth. We can cling to the joy that we know we have despite our situations because we serve a God who is greater than anything that we could go through. We won't always be happy, but we can count it all joy that we have Jesus and we can still encounter him today. And he is the joy of the world. I'd love for you guys to throw in uh, the chat right now different ways that Jesus brings you joy in this holiday season. Good morning to you all. This is wishing you a wonderful Christmas day. And I hope you all have been having a very wonderful time in his presence. Uh, one of the things we'll be talking to you about this morning will be Jesus' love of the whole world. Uh, what we mean by love is just uh, more or less like being your brother's keeper, taking care of each and every one of ourselves, taking care of ourselves and taking care of the next person to us. Who is your brother? Your brother is actually the person that is next to you. It doesn't have to be your biological brother before you can know this is a brother or this is a sister. So I'll just read some Bible passages to emphasize on what that says. Uh, the first Bible passage I'll be reading is from the first book of John, chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. And it says, So we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. And it says, Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. The second passage is taken from the book of John chapter 13 verse 34 that says, A new commandment I give you, and it says, Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. That is Jesus commanding us, telling us how to love ourselves. Uh, also in the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 10, he says, love does, not harm, love does not harm a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And the last one will be the passage that we all know very well, which is John 3, 16, but I'll be reading that later. So when you're talking about love during Christmas, there are different ways you can show love to your neighbor. There are different ways you can show love to your brothers and sisters. If God has so blessed you so much, and you know that God has blessed you and you have left and you have more than enough, you can use what you have to bless those that do not have as much as you have. We have a lot of people on the street, we have a lot of homeless people that they don't even know where their next meal is coming from. And yet you say you are your brother's keeper when you are having leftovers in your fridge. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't have leftovers in the fridge, but on a day like Christmas Day, which is a day of giving, the day that God actually gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross for each and every one of us, and that is the Son we're celebrating today, so that we can be loved, so that God can show us how much He loves us. And that is where the book of John 3.16 came in, where it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. If God can give his only begotten son to this world, that's how much God loves us. And God is asking us in the book of John 3, uh, John 13, 34, the book of Romans 13, 10, and the book of 1 John 4, 16 to 17, he's telling us how much God wants us to love each other. So I'm asking you this morning, and I'm asking you not just today that it's Christmas only, Love is not supposed to be only for Christmas. Love is supposed to be every day of our life. We're supposed to be our brother's keeper. We're supposed to love our brothers and sisters like ourselves. So I'm asking you this morning, when you're having that turkey on your table, when you're having that sumptuous meal that you're having with your family, remember those who are on the street that they don't even know where their next meal is coming from. Share that love to them. Go to go on the street. Bless those that are, are yet to be blessed. Because God has blessed you so much, you put out that same thing again. Pay it forward like the word says. Go out there, bless those who don't have it. 
And I'm telling you this morning, as we are doing so, God Almighty will continue to bless you. Have yourself a wonderful Christmas, and I pray that this upcoming new year will be a year of good news and a good year of blessing, a year of healing, and a year, a year of provision for each and every one of us. God bless you all. And remember, as you're celebrating this Christmas, remember to bless someone. Remember to show someone love, and as you do so, God bless you and God will shower you with his own love. Have a wonderful afternoon. God bless. Dear God, we just want to thank you so much that you are our hope, our peace, and our love that you sent your son to this world to bring us hope, love, joy, and peace. God, we did not deserve the gifts that you've given us, and yet you still freely gave them. God, we pray over this Christmas season that you would just be with each and every one of us in our homes, with our families, with maybe we're, we're not with our families this Christmas season. We're missing them, God. I just pray that you would show up for us and show us that we are not alone. You love us. You have called us. You have a plan for us, and you bring us peace that passes all understanding. God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift that we have, and we pray that you would be with us for the remainder of the Christmas season, God. In your name we pray. Amen.